Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Instagram. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, world. Hi, my name is Morgan Denny, and for those of you who don't know me, I am lead faculty for the Institute of Clinical Excellence for the Primary Care Division. Um, I also teach the online post-COVID course, but today I want to talk a little bit, a bit about being tired, which is something that I'm sure we can all relate to at this time of day. So a lot of our patients come in and might tell us things like, I'm so tired, you know, I can't do this kind of exercise, I'm super fatigued. And I think sometimes we write that off, you know, we're like, well, you're just deconditioned or it's no big deal, like we're going to get into it, uh, or you've been sitting on the couch too much. And some of that, you know, is very true, right? Like sometimes patients are literally just deconditioned. You know, the pandemic happened and they didn't leave their house for eight or nine months. Like they never got off the couch. They couldn't go to the gym anymore. Sometimes our patients, you know, just lack motivation after an injury or maybe they hurt their back and they laid in bed way, way, way too much and too long. Maybe they were scared of something, you know, and sometimes that does lead to general deconditioning which can cause certain level of fatigue or lack of energy with activity. You know, so sometimes it is just deconditioning and we have to be aware of that and kind of let that play into our treatment plan. But sometimes it's more than that, you know, and as the practitioners, I think who are often asking our patients to increase their energy output, you know, to do exercise, to move more, we're often the practitioners who are going to hear about this from patients or the practitioner under whose care our patients are going to realize this is happening, where they start adding things to their life. They're moving more, they're getting more steps, they're getting up out of their desk chair more often, they're adding those HIIT workouts, and they're feeling like, gosh, I, I feel like I should feel better, but I'm really tired, right? So I think as really good practitioners, what we need to do as PTs as getting more skilled at figuring out where fatigue comes from. Now, this is a huge, huge loaded question because fatigue can come from so many different body systems. This is something we often talk about in the primary care course because it can have so many different origins, but is a really common thing that patients tell us. You know, is the patient's fatigue truly coming from deconditioning or is it coming from a different system? So today I thought what we do is kind of go through and just have a good solid reminder of what different systems the some fatigue can come from and also some questions we can ask to subjectively figure out where some of our further testing should go or also to potentially know that we need to refer someone. So in terms of the subjective, I think it's really good that we dig into their fatigue. The first question I usually ask people is like, what does this fatigue feel like? You know, is this something where, you know, you're just tired all the time? Do you lack energy? Or is this more something where, you know, it's like they feel like their arms or legs are lead, um, which I've had people say to me before, like, I just feel like I'm trying to get up out of the chair or to move or to walk around the block. And my body just feels so heavy, you know, so that tells us different information than just like, yeah, I just feel sleepy. Like when I used to study for exams all night long and the next day I felt really sleepy, that's how I feel. Okay, these are very different symptoms, so good for us to know. You know, is their fatigue truly physical? Like, does it feel like it's in their body or is it like more of a mental fatigue where, you know, if they get their body moving, they feel fine, but truly it's more of like a mental brain fog type of thing where they just feel like they can't think through things and therefore they feel fatigued and it transitions over to their body. That's good to know. Is it motivational? You know, some patients will tell us like, I'm just, I'm just so tired all the time, but we might follow up with questions like, well, what activities make you tired? Or during what part of the day do you get tired? That way we can start digging into some patterns. You know, is this something that is cyclical? Some people have great energy during the morning and then their energy fails in the afternoon. If this is a severe thing, especially with older adults, like this can actually indicate different forms of dementia or other underlying neurologic conditions. But it could also just be, you know, like they're not sleeping well and they need, you know, they wake up and they have okay energy and then they don't in the afternoon where kind of that recharge has faded. So finding that out or finding if the fatigue is relating to a specific task, 
For example, someone might feel that their energy is really pretty normal. And then when it's time to go to the gym, you know, when the alarm goes off on their phone that you have them set to make sure they go to the gym and do their exercises, maybe that's when they're like, yeah, now I just feel really tired and I feel like I can't motivate to get to the gym. Okay, that energy level might be more motivational. So we might enter that realm a little more deeply. You know, is it, so is it, as we talked about, you know, reactionary or avoidance related? So they're really just trying not to do a certain activity or they can't get themselves to do it. Uh, so that's good to know. Also finding out, you know, like, is this something that is constant? So a fatigue level that's constant, that someone wakes up with and is there throughout the day and doesn't fluctuate or change whether the person is active or not, that's something we need to know too and could point us towards something that is far more systemic and not necessarily related to the activity or to the body's response to an activity or to motivation, stuff like that. Something where it's like, yeah, I can go for a run. My energy stays still super low, the same. I'm done running. I don't get that endorphin bump. You know, I just stay really, really low energy throughout the day. It doesn't matter, you know, what I eat. It doesn't matter how I'm sleeping. It doesn't matter if my mental mood is good. So some of these things are good to understand because they'll kind of like allow us to deviate into a different path of questioning or testing to kind of get to the depth of this question. And the last thing I always like to ask questions, because unfortunately it is a part of seeing people in the medical system, is, is it possible that medications are at play? You know, have you had a medication change? Do you have a medication list I can look at? Who doesn't love when their patient pulls out that eight and a half by 11 sheet and is like, here's my medication list. And you're thinking, okay, here we go. Um, but I think these things are really important to point out and kind of ask about. Um, as an example, just a couple of weeks ago, I actually had a patient who is kind of like <laughs> my, my idol, my life goal. She's 88, still walks two to three miles every day up a pretty steep hill at the park, um, very mentally clear and with it. Uh, but she, you know, she came into a session. She was like, I just, the last couple of weeks, I've been feeling really tired. Like my walks aren't enjoyable. Uh, I feel like I just can't do as many miles as I normally would. So we started going through and asking some of these questions to figure out, does this feel like a physical fatigue issue? You know, I asked her, does it feel like your legs are getting tired walking up and down the hill? Does it feel like they're going to give out on you? Do you start to feel like unbalanced or insecure? She's like, no, I don't. I just feel like my whole body doesn't want to walk anymore. Like I just feel tired. Like it's not fun to be pushing and moving. So we just did a simple vitals check at rest. Those all looked really good. So then because her fatigue is associated with activity, especially, I just had her walk for like five minutes. And what I found was her heart rate didn't change at all. In fact, it stayed in the mid to low fifties <laughs> the whole time, you know? So to me, that was a sign where it's like, oh, cardiovascularly, something's not right. Your heart rate's not increasing. How is your body gonna adapt to its needs for more oxygenation to the tissues? That's a reason you might be tired. So I sent her back to her doctor because on her medication list, which luckily is not an eight and a half by 11, there's a beta blocker. So sent her to her doctor and in the next week they had DC'd the beta blocker and changed the other meds to address blood pressure. And she was feeling really normal again. Felt like her energy was just back to normal. Just that easy, right? But it takes someone listening to patients and actually diving in a little bit to make that change. And especially for older adults who get written off as like, you're just tired because you're old. That's not okay, right? But we can be the person that listens, measures something, sees that there's something not right, and then refer to someone who can check through other aspects or work on things. So just to briefly kind of go through some of those places that fatigue can come from, just as a reminder, you know, so that we're, our brains are kind of working along these cycles. So anything car cardiopulmonary can cause fatigue, right? If you think about it, the cardiopulmonary system's literal job is to pump oxygenated blood and nutrients around the system. If your system isn't getting the energy it needs because of a lack of ability to pump it or a lack of the lungs ability to process and diffuse oxygen across the lung fields into the capillaries, 
you're going to be tired because your tissues, your brain, your everything is just not getting the kind of nutrients and health it needs. So the cardiopulmonary system is a big one that comes up if your patients feel like their energy is low or they're fatigued. Um, similarly, blood sugar issues are a big one here. So if patients have blood sugar problems, like they're pre-diabetic or diabetic and it's not being well controlled, one of the things that happens is that the sugar, the we'll call it the energy that's in your blood <clears throat> can no longer get transported into your cells. So your cells end up being hungry and starving all the time. Your blood sugar is high <clears throat> because that sugar actually can't get out of the blood and into the cells to provide energy. So people feel really lethargic and fatigued all the time. So that's something we can definitely check. You know, it could be a medication issue, like we talked about, whether related to blood sugar, whether related to the cardiopulmonary system. A lot of times also like fatigue, and sometimes it's easy to rec recognize this and sometimes not, can also be related to mental health issues, specifically depression. In fact, for a lot of older adults, just literal lack of energy without any of the signs and symptoms we think about as being depressive, like sadness and lack of interest in life, can be just related to depression without some of those symptoms. So we've got to keep that in mind. Also, you know, if you've treated anyone with significant depression, sometimes they'll say like, I was just too tired to get out of bed that can translate into, I was too depressed to get out of bed, you know, but a lot of times patients aren't willing to share unless we dig a little bit deeper. Remembering that thyroid can play a big thing. Hypothyroidism specifically can let people be sort of lower in energy. That's something we can often check by, you know, seeing when the patient's last uh, blood screen was or referring just to get some general blood tests. Sometimes, but less often, people can have an infection of sorts that can also lead to fatigue. So if you think about it, when the last time was you had a cold or a flu or just something minor going on, you probably felt like you wanted to stay on the couch. It's because your immune system is trying to fight this thing, this underlying infection. And so when someone has a low level infection, it can also cause fatigue. Now, most infections will come with other symptoms a fever, kind of the, the chills, the sweats, something like that. People will know they have something going on, but sometimes they won't, especially with the elderly. If they have a UTI, this can represent in a lot of different ways. Oftentimes it's confusion, but sometimes it's just a general infection, which can lead to fatigue. So it's good for us to screen these kind of things or ask about them. Now, next up, blood concerns. So just like the cardiopulmonary system's job is to pump blood flow that has oxygen and nutrients around the system, what if the blood itself has an issue? What if there's not enough red blood cells? You know, what if your patient is anemic? This is a big one that can cause fatigue and especially in younger people is good for us to be aware of. Now, similarly but different, people can actually have too much iron in their blood too, a condition called hemochromatosis that can also lead to the fatigued level um, because their blood kind of gets like sluggish and things kind of get gummed up. I've had this happen in a patient where it was like a young 20-ish year old runner and she came in because she was having some hip pain, which was actually also related to the hemochromatosis. But she just said, you know, like I was running eight minute miles, you know, probably five or six miles at a time and felt really good. And then all of a sudden, you know, my hips started hurting and my pace went down really fast. And in a few months, she was running like a 12 minute mile, you know, a max two to three miles. So we went through some of these questions, you know, and tried to figure out, OK, is this related to pain? Was there an injury? What happened? And it turned out there was no injury. It was just like the slow onset of these hip symptoms and fatigue where she just couldn't, didn't feel like she could push. It wasn't about pain. Her body wouldn't let her. So that's not normal, right? So I sent her back for some blood tests right after the first visit because it was like, check in my box. This doesn't fit a normal pattern. This is probably not something that only PT is going to assess. And she had really high levels of iron. So that was fixed from a medical care perspective and all of her other symptoms went away. Awesome. You know, whereas it sounds like PT, 
It really wasn't. So we've got to be aware that these factors are on board. And when we hear stories, whether it's an older adult or a younger person, where their energy level is low or doesn't match what we expect it to be or should be, we've got to know something might be going on and dig in. Now you can also have hormonal shifts, right? So women who are people who are perimenopausal will often have hormonal shifts or imbalances as their body tries to re-regulate where they feel tired all the time. That is a pretty normal one. And it's not that it can't be treated if the person chooses for it to be, but we have to be aware that that could be on board. Now, all those things said, we've also got to remember that really poor sleep and poor nutrition can be the factor too. So even if your patient says like, I'm getting plenty of sleep, let's ask, what does that mean? If your patient says, oh, well, you know, like last night I got five hours and then the night before I got eight and the night before I got maybe like five or six, that's probably not enough if that is their consistent pattern. So really important for us to dig in there because if sleep seems to be the factor that we can find that might be causing our patient's fatigue level, that's something that we can help our patient shift and talk about sleep hygiene stuff and the appropriate level of sleep and sleep quality and see if there's a change. You know, because if there is a change, awesome, you did it. And if there's not, then we can dig further. But some of these things are aspects where it's like PTs are perfectly placed to do the education to help the patient make the change. And some of them, we've got to be able to send the person out. So in thinking about some of these things, I think the key factors to think about are when your patient is fatigued or their energy level doesn't match or they're reporting that they just can't do a thing. We've got to be able to ask a few more questions. And then once our questions hopefully direct us in a direction, whether it's medical, whether it's just general deconditioning, whether it's poor sleep or nutrition, we've got to be able to figure out, is this something that I could test? You know, so for example, cardiopulmonary stuff, we can do vitals and look at what happens with activity to either increase or decrease the chances that that hypothesis is the right one. And then from there, if we get a good idea of what may or may not be going on, we need to get comfortable either keeping the patient and knowing when that's safe to do, or referring them out to get further testing so that we know not only is their fatigue or energy thing being taken care of, but also is the activity that I'm sending the patient home with actually something that's going to be helpful and increase their energy and boost their mood and do all the cool things that exercise generally does, or is this actually going to be detrimental to the patient because of this underlying issue of energy? Again, this is something we've got to get better at screening for and understanding which is what. We're not always going to know, just to put that out there. It doesn't matter how good you are unless you are doing a ton of medical stuff in your clinic in-house and you know the results right away. We're not always going to be perfect at this and that's okay, but we've got to get better at kind of figuring out the balance so that we can get these people some of the treatment that they need. So keep that in mind and uh, when your patients come in and they don't have great energy or they're reporting that their energy level is really low, let's not just let that slide. Let's not say like, oh, you know, you'll be okay, it's fine. Let's ask more questions, let's dig in, let's truly be doctors of physical therapy and get in there so our patients can get the help they need. All right, hope you all have a great day. The song of the day today is called Innocent Spring by Sean Hayes. Give it a listen. And maybe I'll see some of you at the spinal manipulation course this weekend in Tri-Cities area, Washington. And the rest of you, have a great day. Peace out, everyone. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.